Hi everyone, I'm Angela and today we'll go through a Linguistics Olympiad question. So, here's our question. Inuktitut numbers. This problem today is a quite simple question involving some knowledge of number systems. So, let's look at this question. Inuktitut is one of the main languages of the Inuit people, which lives in several areas in the northern Canada and Alaska. Two years ago, students from a school in the small town of Kaktovik invented a new way of writing numbers, more appropriate for the way numbers are expressed in the Inuktitut sorry for my pronunciations, Inuktitut language. Imagine that you are travelling through northern Canada and find some Inuit students that know nothing about English, Latin script or Indo-Arabic numerals. Then, in order to start communication, one of the students offer you a list of mathematical operations, shown below, in the left column. This version of the table uses the Indo-Arabic symbols for the operations. Our first question here is to write down the answers for the operations on the right. As you can see, the strokes do look quite different to the left column, meaning that we will need to decipher the left column first. For convenience, we will label the left column as shown. I know many of you find it difficult to approach this type of problems at first. For questions involving operations and characters, there will always be single digit numbers, regardless of which number system. So I'll first look at qu equation 1. Compared to other equations, this equation is less complicated and the product of the equation appears to be in equation 3 and 6, implying that it is a single digit number. From the above characteristics, we can make an educated guess that this equation is 1 plus 1 equals 2. Another way to approach is that in the first operation, we see that it is one bar plus another bar equals two bars connected. From this, we can assume that the equation is one plus one equals two. To further validate this assumption, we will need to look at other equations. From our assumption, we know that the V-like stroke in equation two is two. From our second method, by counting strokes, we get that two plus three equals five. The product of this equation is 5. We can confirm this by counting single digit numbers. After looking at all the equations, we figure out that these characters are most likely to be single digit numbers, as they sometimes combine to form other numbers. As there are 5 of these characters, it will be reasonable to think that this number system has a sub base 5. It is not base 5, but sub base 5, due to another reason that we will soon explore. Looking at equation 3, we can see that there are some new characters that we have not seen. However, it is made up in parts as shown. Now, this equation looks solvable. The top of the first character and the second character includes the stroke, meaning 5. The bottom of the second character is 2, making the second character 2 plus 5 equals 7. The first character includes a W-like stroke. As I identified previously, it is a single digit number. We have already identified 1, 2, 3 and 5, leaving only 4, so the W-like stroke must be 4. This means that the first character is 4 plus 5 equals 9, the product here must be 7 plus 9 equals 16. This works as the product of the equation includes stroke 1, hence the top bar of this character must be 15. This can be confirmed in equation 4, where using the same logic, the first character is 15 plus 3 equals 18, minus 3 equals 15. This logic supports all our above assumptions. Equation 5 is the same, where 3 times 5 equals 15. Now, equation 6 is where we will realise that this number system has a base of 20 and a sub-base of 5. Using the same logic, we get 5 plus 4 times 5 plus 2. This gives us 63. If we look at the product using our previous logic, we get 3 and 3, which we assume to be 33. However, two threes to represent 63 is not too weird for us to rule out all our logic before. Looking at the product again, the repetition of the numeral with a space between them actually strongly suggests that this is a positional number system. It is okay if you don't know what a positional number system is 
because its mathematical definition is quite confusing. It is the method of denoting numbers by the use of a finite number of digits. Each digit have its value multiplied by its place value. Sounds confusing, right? But if we use an example, you will understand it better. For example, nine hundred and thirty-six equals nine times a hundred plus three times ten plus six. So in this case, when we go to the tens digit, we multiply by ten. But in the question, when we go to the tens digit, we multiply by twenty. The numbers of the second positions are counted from twenty to twenty. This is confirmed as we can piece characters together to obtain numbers up to nineteen, but not twenty. With this in mind, we look at equation seven. Given the logic above, we realize that the first character should be twenty times four, which is eighty, plus this curly stroke. Moving on, the second character is fifteen plus one, which is sixteen, and the product is four times twenty equals eighty, plus sixteen, giving us ninety-six. This means that the first character must be eighty exactly, meaning that this curly stroke is only a placeholder. It is zero. Now we've solved all the symbols that were given to us. We can now list a table for a clearer view. I have done so here. Take a second to look at it, and if you have any questions, please let me know by commenting below. We can now approach the left column. We will label them again. Equation one is very simple. It is simply three plus three equals six. Looking down at the table, six looks like this. Equation one, tick. Equation two might initially look daunting as you don't know the second character. However, from basic maths knowledge, we know that the curly symbol is zero. Zero times anything will be zero, making the answer zero. Next, equation three. By using positional number system, we get twenty minus three equals seventeen. Equation four is five times five, which equals twenty-five. For equation five, we don't even need to calculate as it is visually obvious. Equation six is twenty plus ten plus two, which is thirty-two, plus twenty plus four plus five, which is twenty-nine, giving us sixty-one. Using the same system, we write the numbers three and one. Last equation: twelve divided by three equals four. Now we've solved all our equations. Hopefully, you've learned something new and enjoyed using logic and mathematics to approach linguistics. That's all for today. Please like, comment, and subscribe below. I'll see you in my next video.